They have added aspects of Starship, such as use of stainless steel and methalox, to a Falcon 9 architecture, which would enable it to beat Falcon 9. That is what Elon Musk said about China's new reusable rocket that's about to launch. So, what is this rocket that caught Musk's attention? And is it really better than SpaceX's rocket? One of China's first reusable rockets is almost ready for takeoff, everyone. Landspace's partially reusable Ju Q3 launch vehicle is gearing up for its debut flight. The company recently shared a short video showing the rocket hardware being transported from its manufacturing base in Jiaxing, Zhejiang province, all the way to the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, a journey of about 4,000 kilometers. That trip wasn't exactly smooth sailing. Along the way, a few dozen tires had to be replaced, and there were even some issues with the truck's fluid system. On top of that, Landspace reportedly faced some last-minute hardware hiccups that almost delayed getting the Ju Q3 ready. Even so, the rocket's been sitting at the launch site for most of the month. It was first spotted around October 14th at Launch Area 96B, and the company later confirmed it. There were also some whispers that the vehicle might have taken a little damage during the long haul, which led authorities at Jiao Chuen to request a full fueling of the rocket for a first-stage static fire test. That test has since been completed successfully. For those not familiar, a static fire is one of the final steps before launch. It's when the rocket is locked down on the pad, its engines are fired up, and engineers check that everything works properly without actually lifting off. Unlike SpaceX's Starship static fires, which are often done right on the pad, Landspace used a flame trench to redirect the exhaust. The result is less fire and smoke to be seen, but still some pretty stunning footage. That static fire wrapped up the three-day first phase of Juche 3's maiden flight campaign, which also included a fueling test. Both tests were carried out in the Dongfeng Commercial Space Innovation Pilot Zone in northwestern China. According to Landspace, the rocket will next go through a vertical integration rehearsal, then head back to the technical zone for inspection and maintenance before its big debut, an orbital launch that will also attempt a first-stage recovery. This campaign tested the entire operational flow transporting the rocket, raising it vertically, loading supercooled propellants, running through all launch procedures, firing up and holding down its nine TNQ-12A engines, and finally draining the propellant tanks. Basically, it's a full-scale rehearsal proving that the rocket and ground systems are ready to work together. So we now know China's about to launch its new reusable rocket. But what makes this one so special? And how does it really stack up against SpaceX's reusable vehicles? Zhukui 3 officially got the green light in August 2023. It's a large, reusable, liquid-fueled rocket developed entirely by Landspace, designed to handle big Constellation deployment missions. The rocket itself is impressive. It's 4.5 meters wide, with a 5.2-meter fairing, stands 66.1 meters tall, and weighs over 570 tons at liftoff, producing more than 750 tons of thrust. The first stage is built mainly out of stainless steel, powered by nine Tianque 12A engines that burn liquid methane and liquid oxygen, or methalox, as it's often called. It's also equipped with grid fins, landing legs, and an RCS system for steering, allowing the stage to fly back, land softly, and be reused, just like SpaceX's Falcon 9 boosters. For the first few missions, Zhukui 3 will fly in its Block 1 version. In that configuration, it can carry 11.8 tons to low Earth orbit if the rocket isn't recovered, or 8 tons if the first stage lands downrange. The upgraded Block 2 version will boost those numbers significantly. 21.3 tons to orbit when expended, 18.3 tons with a downrange landing, and 12.5 tons with a full return to the launch site. Eventually, the first stage will switch to nine TQ-12B engines, up from the current 12A models, raising total thrust to around 900 tons. Landspace says each booster is designed to be reused up to 20 times, with the possibility of certifying it for even more flights. The second stage will use a single TQ-15B engine, generating about 100 tons of thrust, also running on liquid methane and oxygen. To recover the first stage, three engines will ignite during re-entry to slow the descent, followed by a single-engine landing burn, similar to how Falcon 9 touches down on its drone ships. For boost-back burns, the booster flips around mid-flight and reignites one engine to head back toward the landing zone. In its larger Block 2 form, Zhuche 3 will stand 76, 6 meters tall and weigh about 660 tons when fully fueled. 
The Block 1 version is slightly smaller, 66 meters tall, and about 570 tons at liftoff. Both the booster and second stage share the same 4.5 meter diameter, while the fairing is 5.2 meters wide and splits into two halves to release payloads in orbit. According to Landspace, getting the rocket out to the pad and running through all system checks marks the final major milestone before launch. The main goal for Juche 3's first flight is simple, get the rocket safely into low Earth orbit. But there's also a big bonus target, attempting the first booster landing, since all the necessary recovery hardware is already on board. Back in June, Landspace ran a 45-second, nine-engine static fire test, which confirmed that the booster's design and control systems were ready to go. And a little over a year ago, the company proved its landing tech with a 10-kilometer hop test, complete with an in-flight engine restart and a guided, unpowered descent. In other words, they've already done the groundwork for reusability. Almost two months ago, CEO Zhang Changwu said the team was aiming for a September launch, or November if they ran into delays. October was basically off the table, since China's Shenzhou 21 crude launch and Shenzhou 20's return were already scheduled around that time. Right now, Shenzhou 21 is expected to launch between October 29th and November 1st, with Shenzhou 20 returning sometime between November 3rd and November 5th. Those tight mission windows pushed Landspace's opportunity into early November. Landspace hasn't officially shared its landing plans online, but a company handout revealed that the boosters will touch down on a dedicated landing pad about 300 kilometers downrange, located in Minqin County, under the jurisdiction of Wuwei City in Gansu Province. The landing site will reportedly include all the essentials, fire suppression systems, communications links, and safety infrastructure for handling the recovered booster. If everything stays on track, Juche 3's maiden flight is now likely set for November, carrying a few satellites for early customers who clearly have confidence in the vehicle. If the launch succeeds, it'll mark a major moment, the first flight of China's reusable stainless steel rocket, and another clear sign that China's commercial space sector is ready to compete with some of the best in the U.S. China's commercial space industry is rapidly rising, and companies like Landspace are at the forefront of this new era. Founded in 2015, shortly after Beijing opened parts of its space sector to private investment, Landspace symbolizes a major turning point in how China approaches space exploration. For decades, China's space program was run almost entirely by the state. But as American companies like SpaceX began achieving remarkable successes, China recognized the need to bring private innovation into the mix. Over the past year, this shift has become increasingly visible. A number of private and semi-private companies, including Landspace, Galactic Energy, iSpace, Space Pioneer, CasSpace, and XPace, have successfully launched rockets into orbit. These milestones mark not only technological progress, but also the maturing of an industry that was nearly non-existent a decade ago. Dozens more Chinese startups are now developing rockets and satellites, driven by both competition and strong government backing. Beijing's official support for the private space sector has become more explicit. In its 2025 government work report, commercial space was highlighted as one of the country's fastest growing industries and a key area for safe and healthy development. This is more than symbolic. It shows that the government now views space as a powerful driver of innovation, economic growth, and global influence. Just a year earlier, in 2024, the phrase appeared for the first time in the national report, marking the formal start of China's commercial space era. That same year, China launched its own satellite internet network, began experimenting with reusable rockets, opened its first commercial launch site, and set a new record for total rocket launches. The influence of SpaceX is impossible to miss. Its success in developing reusable rockets and running large-scale satellite networks like Starlink has become a model that China's policymakers hope to replicate. In the United States, companies such as SpaceX handle both civilian and military launches. In contrast, China's People's Liberation Army still depends mostly on state rockets like Long March for its reconnaissance satellites, though some smaller military missions now use commercial launchers such as X-Pace's Kuizhou and CAS Space's Lijian rockets. Even for commercial customers, China's industry is still in transition. 
Satellite operators like CGSTL, which runs the Jilin-1 imaging constellation, and Guodian Gaokei, which manages the Tianqi Internet of Things network, currently rely on a mix of state and private rockets. That balance may soon shift once reusable vehicles like Landspace's upcoming Zhuche-3 become operational. Beijing now offers insurance support for commercial launch companies, while Shanghai has rolled out hundreds of millions of yuan in financial aid, including low-interest loans for factory expansion. Local officials have also begun encouraging Chinese firms to enter international markets, recognizing that domestic demand alone will not sustain long-term growth. This growing system of state-guided investment funds is part of a broader transformation in China's economy, sometimes described as the financialization of the state. Instead of directly managing industries, the government increasingly uses venture funds and credit programs to steer innovation toward national goals. In early 2025, Beijing even launched a trillion yuan investment fund to support emerging technologies, including space and artificial intelligence. Landspace itself recently secured long-term financing to build a new rocket factory in the city of Huzhou, a sign of confidence in its future. China's commercial launch sector now includes more than 20 established companies, with new entrants joining every year. As competition intensifies, smaller firms are beginning to specialize in niche areas such as propulsion systems, material science, and electronic components. The government's next challenge will be to maintain safety and quality standards across this fast-expanding field. The China National Space Administration recently emphasized the need for unified standards and oversight to avoid duplication and inefficiency. Even though Beijing now avoids using the phrase military-civil fusion as often as before, the concept remains deeply embedded in policy. Advances made by commercial firms in areas like rocket reusability, materials, and satellite networking will inevitably strengthen China's military space capabilities. In that sense, the boundary between commercial and national missions is becoming increasingly blurred. China's commercial space industry is still young, but its rapid growth signals a major transformation. What began as an effort to emulate the U.S. model has evolved into something distinct, a hybrid system that combines state direction with private innovation. For China, space is no longer just about prestige or exploration. It's about building a new kind of economy, one where rockets, satellites, and data networks form the foundation of national power in the 21st century. In short, China's private space race is no longer a small experiment. It's becoming a central pillar of the country's technological future. And with rockets like Landspace's Juche-3 now preparing for flight, China's next big leap in space might come not from its government, but from its new generation of private innovators.